Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 9th of May. Heat wave persists in India's northwest, rains batter eastern coast due to cyclone Asani. Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif vows to take legal action against Imran Khan's anti state speech. And Mahinda Rajpaksa resigns as Sri Lankan PM amid massive clashes curfew. And now for all the details, people in parts of northwestern India struggle to cope as heat wave conditions continue to persist in the region on Monday, with temperatures hovering between 40 to 43 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the eastern coastal state of West Bengal witnessed rainfall as Cyclone Asani intensified in the Bay of Bengal Ocean. The cyclonic storm was likely to weaken in the next 48 hours, with no landfall expected. People in parts of India's northwestern Rajasthan and Gujarat states sought shelter under shades and consumed fluids to protect themselves from the extreme weather as heat wave conditions persisted in the region on Monday. Summers in India are extremely harsh because of the country's proximity to the equator and several states have witnessed extreme heat in recent days, sometimes surpassing 45 degrees Celsius. People in a village in Gujarat's Navsari also complained of an acute water shortage amid the soaring temperatures that have dried up several water resources. IMD, the India Meteorological Department on Monday said, Rajasthan and Gujarat states will continue to reel under heat wave for the next two days, while national capital New Delhi and other parts of northern India will experience hot temperatures from May 11 to 15. For the Rajasthan, we, we, we will continue to have 44, 45 and a heat wave. Also, Madhya Pradesh, the, we will continue to have a heat wave. And Gujarat, another two days. Today, nine and ten. Meanwhile, India's eastern Kolkata city and its adjoining districts in West Bengal state witnessed rainfall on Monday as Cyclone Asani intensified in the Bay of Bengal. Although the cyclonic storm was expected to weaken in the next 48 hours with no landfall likely, Fishermen and coastal inhabitants in eastern coastal states were advised not to venture into the sea. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has vowed legal action against his predecessor Imran Khan, blaming him for making an anti-state speech during a public rally on Sunday. Sharif accused Khan of attempting to instigate a civil war as the PTI party chairman said he will bring about 2 million supporters to capital Islamabad as part of a long march rally on May 20th. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif lashed out at his predecessor and PTI chief Imran Khan on Sunday for hatching a grand conspiracy against Pakistan, saying that legal action would be taken. Sharif, in a late-night statement, blamed Imran Khan for concocting a narrative against the state, constitution and national institutions during a speech in Ebtabad on Sunday. He said first Imran Khan conspired to drown Pakistan's economy and now he is trying to trigger a civil war but the government will crush his conspiracy. In his speech, Imran Khan reiterated his conspiracy allegations of U.S. plotting his ouster with leaders of the incumbent government in a parliamentary vote held in April. He announced a long march to Islamabad on May 20 and said that 2 million people will come to the federal capital on his call, irrespective of how many containers are put up to create hindrances. Islamabad man. एक इंसानों का जुनून आने वाला है और एक आवाज होगी इस्लामाबाद में कि हमें हकी की आजादी चाहिए हमें इंपोर्टेड हुकूमत ना मंजूर इमरान खान ब्लेम्ड शरीफ फैमिली ऑफ करप्शन एज ही डिमांडेड स्नैप इलेक्शंस द नेक्स्ट पार्लियामेंट्री इलेक्शंस इन पाकिस्तान आर ड्यू इन 2023 
And moving on, locals in Gilgit Baltistan held a protest recently to express their anger over illegal land leasing by the government, frequent load shedding, and the 1949 Karachi Agreement that they claimed undermines their fundamental rights. The protesters blamed people in the illegally occupied region have suffered decades of exploitation owing to skewed policies framed by Pakistan. Residents of Gilgit, Baltistan held a protest recently to raise their voices against illegal land leasing, frequent load shedding and discriminatory 1949 Karachi Agreement. The protesters raised slogans against the Karachi Pact claiming it undermines fundamental rights of the people of the illegally occupied region, depriving them of significant political powers. There has also been continuous dissent against the existing land laws which allow government ownership over all barren land. गिलगित बल्तिसान के जमीन पर कब्जा करना छोड़ दे गिलबसान के हक परस्तों के खिलाफ शेड्यूल फोर लगाना छोड़ दे हक तो यह है कि गिलगित बल्तिसान के मदनियात पर भी कब्जा हो रहा है लीज देना छोड़ दे ओवर द इयर्स लोकल्स हैव बीन रेजिंग वॉइसेस अगेंस्ट पॉलिसीज ऑफ सक्सेसिव पाकिस्तानी गवर्नमेंट्स एंड डिनायल ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स टू देम क्लेमिंग इस्लामाबाद से एजेंडा इज टू कीप द रीजन अंडर डेवलप Afghanistan's Taliban government in its latest decree has ordered women to cover their faces in public a return to a signature policy of their past hardline rule and an escalation of restrictions that are causing anger at home and abroad Afghanistan's Taliban government has ordered women to cover their faces in public The order from the group supreme leader Habibullah Akhundzada on Saturday said that if a woman did not cover her face outside home her father or closest male relative would be visited and face potential prison or firing from state jobs Most women in Afghanistan wear a headscarf for religious reasons but many in urban areas such as capital Kabul do not cover their faces The group says the ideal face covering is the all encompassing blue burqa which was obligatory for women in public during the Taliban's previous 1996 to 2001 rule a return to a signature policy of their past hardline rule and an escalation of restrictions that are causing anger at home and abroad the decree triggered reactions at an international level the un secretary general antonio guterres said he is alarmed over the decree and urged the taliban to keep their promises to afghan women and girls and the obligations under international human rights law us special envoy for afghan women girls and human rights reena amiri also condemned the move i joined calls by afghans and the international community to end these oppressive measures reopen girls schools let women work and resume their lives she said in a tweet the un assistance mission in afghanistan unama in a statement expressed concerns and said it will immediately request meetings with the officials of the current government to seek clarification on the status of the decision the taliban has faced intense criticism from western governments but also from some religious scholars and islamic nations for limiting women's rights including keeping girls high schools closed The United States and others have cut development aid and sanctioned the banking system, pushing Afghanistan towards economic ruin. The Taliban claims it has changed since its last rule. However, in recent months, it has brought in regulations limiting women's movement without a male chaperone and banning men and women from visiting parks together. And in news from Sri Lanka, Mahinda Rajapaksa resigned as Sri Lanka's Prime Minister on Monday, hours after his supporters attacked anti-government protesters outside embattled President and his younger brother Gotabaya Rajapaksa's office. The clash reportedly left a legislator of the ruling party dead and several injured and prompted authorities to impose a nationwide curfew. Effective immediately, I have tendered my resignation as Prime Minister to the President, Mahinda Rajapaksa said in a Twitter post. Police had to use dozens of tear gas rounds and water cannon to break up the confrontation earlier in the day, the first major clash between pro and anti-government camps. Spontaneous nationwide protests have raged since late March against the government amid the country's worst financial crisis, with thousands demanding Rajapaksa and his influential family quit for mishandling the economy.
And ahead of local level elections in Nepal, the election commission over the weekend organized a mock election for officers demonstrating the ways to conduct the election. A total of 152,465 candidates had filed the nominations for 13th May local level election in 753 local units. Reports suggest that the government has decided to seal the border entry points with India and China for 72 hours prior to elections. The Election Commission of Nepal over the weekend organized a mock election for officers demonstrating the ways to conduct the election for the upcoming local level polls scheduled for May 13. Dozens of government employees participated in the mock electoral process in capital Kathmandu on Saturday. Under various rankings, several government officials have been deployed by the Election Commission assigning polling stations to conduct the polls. Yeah, <laughs> A three-day workshop about the smooth commencement of election at various booths was organized by the Election Commission last Thursday to appraise the officials about possible problems as well as undertaking that need to be carried out on polling day. A total of 152,465 candidates had filed their nominations for May 13 local level election for various 35,221 posts in 753 local units. A total of 168,000 security personnel from various security agencies of Nepal are going to be mobilized to ensure security during the elections. Meanwhile, reports suggest that the government has decided to seal the border entry points with India and China for 72 hours prior to the elections. All domestic flight services except rescue and relief flights and flights taking off under government directives will be halted during the election day. A Nepali Sherpa scaled the Mount Everest for a record 26th time, beating his own previous record set last year, a government official said on Sunday. 52-year-old Kami Rita Sherpa scaled the 8,848.86-meter mountain on Saturday along the traditional southeast ridge route, leading 10 other Sherpa climbers. The climbing route used by Kami Rita was pioneered by New Zealander Sir Edmund Hillary and Nepal Sherpa Tenzing Norgay in 1953 and remains the most popular. This year, Nepal has issued 316 permits to climb Everest in the peak season, which runs through May, compared with 408 last year, the highest ever. The Himalayan nation, which is heavily reliant on climbers for foreign exchange, faced criticism for allowing overcrowding and several climber deaths on the mountains in 2019. You are a little bit of 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 Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif vows to take legal action against Imran Khan's anti-state speech. And Mahinda Rajpaksa resigns as Sri Lankan PM amid massive clashes curfew. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.